So I'm going to talk a little bit about aims and objectives portion of a proposal. All writing, all communication starts with who is the audience and what they're looking for. You're writing a grant proposal to presumably ask for money and other resources to do the work that you're excited about doing. The person reading your proposal cares about their agenda, not yours. The proposal is not about you, it's about the funding agency and the work that they want to do. So if we think about what an aims and objectives portion of a proposal ought to address, we should ask, what is the funding agency, what are the reviewers looking for? It seems to me that what the reviewers are looking for in aims and objectives are, this is talking about more specifically how you're going to address the problem statement that you've already written. So they want to make sure that whatever you write about aims and objectives are appropriate for the research question, the problem statement that you've given. They want to see evidence that you understand as evidenced by the work that you're going to do. Um, and they want to make sure that you can measure what you say. So one of the things that funding agencies tend to worry about is after the project is over, did you do what you said you were going to do? If you can prove that you did what you said, you're much more likely to get the next grant. The only way that you can prove that you did what you said is if you set out measurable objectives so that we can have a discussion at the, well, so that there's no discussion at the end about whether you did it or not, it should be clear. Depending on the nature of your project, I think of three different ways, there probably are even more, but three different ways of getting at the aims and objectives. So sometimes it's helpful to list aims and say, these are approximately three aims of my project. I'm going to look at an example of that in just a moment, I hope. Um, where, where you have, a, you've given your problem statement, and then you've said, in order to accomplish that, I'm going to do this and this and this. Three aims. Sometimes, depending on the nature of your project, it's more natural to say, here are some questions I'm trying to answer. Several of you talked this morning about doing basic research kind of projects where, where if you said, here's what I'm going to do, you'd say, I'm going to answer these questions. Maybe it would be more natural to state the questions in the first place. A third form that aims and objectives sometimes take are hypotheses to say, I, ha I hypothesize or I think that so and so is true and I'm going to test whether that's so. Uh, maybe I'm going to look at an example of that later today. So these are three, there are others, but these are the three most common ways of addressing aims and objectives in a proposal. At this stage of your proposal writing, you should be able to say, oh, I think in my case it makes most sense to state some hypotheses. I think in my case, listing some questions that I'm going to answer. I think in my case, I'm, here, here are some aims that I want to do, or ways that we might approach it. Okay? Everybody got those in mind? Yes. Of, of course. I mean, you want to do what makes most sense for, to communicate your project to your funding agency. And sometimes you will have aims with questions underneath them. Sometimes you'll have questions with aims underneath them. Sometimes you won't have any of those and you'll have hypotheses. Uh, there's no absolute, well, there is a right answer. It's the one that gets you money, but you don't know in advance what that answer is. It's probably redundant to list all of them. I, I think it probably is more space for this than you need to say, uh, I have aims, I have questions, I have hypotheses. I'd say, you go home and figure out where you are and then come back and talk to me again. I, I think that, that we're trying to make the proposals as simple as we can and having multiple sets of these, I think, complicates matters. Um, so this comes from the original proposal that you had submitted for the project. 
And what you see here is we've aimed at, and he's listed, four aims. When you read those aims, do you think that you understand what he's trying to do? It's a little verbose. That's a different problem. So at, identif at isolating and identifying the strains responsible for and, and so on, um, maybe there are opportunities to improve those specific statements. I'm more interested in giving you opportunities to improve your own specific statements. But I would say this is an example of doing exactly what we've listed here. Now, my opinion, four may be a bit too many. If you try to focus on four things, I think that you focus on zero things. So I'd suggest maybe two or three may be better. But I think that you've done what I've tried to suggest here. What I want to invite us to think about here is if we focus just on the first one, isolating and identifying strains responsible for, I want to think what might happen if instead of doing it that way, we phrased it as a hypothesis, just to give an example. My guess is that you have some idea of what you might find. Is that correct? So what do you think you might find when you isolate and identify strains responsible for? Do you have a couple uh, guesses? Exactly. And that's exactly the sort of thing that I mean by a hypothesis. So you might say, I aim to do this, we hypothesize that, and, and that's a way of kind of supplying a little bit more detail. It also gives then leads to the analysis that you may do in the methods section, which we'll talk about later in the afternoon. So, what I wanted to do here is just give you a, a quick overview, remind you that the reason why we're doing this here is to help our funders understand how we're breaking the problem down that we stated at the beginning. Are there any questions about aims and objectives? Since I picked on you, you get first choice. Because he, he, he thinks that we many uh, germs that might be the cause of super infection. He's wondering if it's a good idea to cite all the things that he has in mind that makes it a little bit heavy to, to um, pose as a hypothesis rather than... So hearing you say that, the answer... I, no, I would not take my own advice on this. Um, I picked this because it seems sort of natural to lay out the possibility that maybe you had something in mind, and there might be a good hypothesis here, but if your hypothesis really is there are tens or hundreds of them, then, then no, having a hundred hypotheses here would be silly. Um, I'll, I'll get back to you. No. And then I mean, if, if you hypothesize a hundred things, no. When I was uh, maybe in the class, I used to know that the aim is like uh, the heading, the, the title, the phrase in another way. And then the objectives now, the aim is something like the, the main objective. And then the sub-objectives are now what he has listed there. So I don't know if he's listing all the sub-objectives as the aim. Does it really... So there are people who, who distinguish between aims, goals, and objectives, um, and there may be three or four more words like that. Um, personally, if the funding agency wants me to make those distinctions, I should find that in their call, and I should follow them. But if they don't, in my mind, I don't find a big difference between goals, aims, and objectives. I can shuffle them however I want. Um, other people feel differently about that. That's, I, I care about the work you're going to do and the benefit that's going to come. I really don't care about precise use of words like these. Technical words I care about using precisely, 
um, but, but not words like aims and objectives, unless the granting agency cares. You're going to ask. Yeah, my question is related to what she was asking. Um, to me, the way I get it is that the aim should be like, like an overall statement of what you want to achieve before you then break it down. Um, I might say that the problem statement is an overall statement of what you want to achieve as well, and that the aims constitute more detail about that. Or I might say that the aims are specific steps along the way. So the aim has a specificity? More than problem statement does, and less than methods are going to. Because what's going to happen is we're going to say, for this aim, these are the methods we're going to use. For this aim, these are the methods we're going to use. And so this is kind of a bridge between the problem statement and the methods. But I need a bridge so that when I get to the details of the method, I'm sort of seeing how it's all going to fit together. Other questions about this section of the proposal, whatever we choose to call it? So I noticed towards the end of George's uh, presentation that there was some brief arguments about the semantics, about <laughs> what it means to say aim and what it means to say objective. So I just want to say that uh, depending on where we go to school or where we work or the people we work with, we grow up with a certain understanding of certain terms. There are certain schools where the aim means a certain specific thing, and you can never change it. Otherwise, the professors will not be so happy. But as you grow in your scientific career, you will realize that what is really important is that people understand what is it that you want to do, and that that is more important than the definition of those words. So in some proposals, it will be called aim. In some, they will just say main objective. In some, they will say specific objective. Whichever word they use, like George was saying, all that you need to communicate is, these are the, the things that I want to accomplish. Does that make sense? So, I, I know it's... If their guideline says words, Use their exactly, <coughs> exactly. If, if, the, if the proposal has specific guidelines on the terminology to use, please use those ones. Do not uh, try and create your own. In the end, we just want to communicate as clearly as possible, and it's more important that we have that clear communication than that we are defining the terminologies, aims, objectives. Uh, which one is the other one? For? What? Goal, yeah. So I've seen in classes where they teach, uh, you, many universities have a course called research, research, uh, research methodology. And uh, the professors sometimes, they will spend a whole afternoon telling you the definition of a goal, the definition of objective, the definition of aim. Now remember that in practice, those definitions don't help you. What is important is that you can tell people what is it that you want to do. And, and note that you can define what a goal is, what's the difference between a goal and an aim. In management schools, they can spend a lot of time trying to define mission, vision. Yeah, I just put up a... Uh, Thanks, Leonard. Yeah, something to helps to confuse you more. But that's, um, that's an example of, uh, so that, that's Unit 8, um, one of the funders, the recent call. They, the funders know the confusion you're going through because they know we come from different schools and we have different definitions, um, which is why most of the time they provide a template to tell you what they mean when they're asking you to show them the goal this is what unit aid means. But you might, if you read the Gates Foundation, for example, they might come up with different terms and tell you this is what they mean. So do not really dwell in too much. Uh, no, this is an objective. No, this is an aim. Um, 
the, the way you will phrase your ideas is what will be more convincing than what you specifically call it. So, um, I personally have been struggling with outcomes and outputs, and <laughs> it gets even more complicated, but just don't dwell on that too much. Yes, so uh, I have also another point to raise, which is that for people working on basic sciences, and I think that group has a number of people working on basic sciences, it might happen that you have aims or objectives that are sequential. In other words, if the first one does not work out, your project is kaput, the whole of it. So you've got to be a little careful about that. Um, that if you have sequential goals, you must make sure that the first one is going to work out, or if it doesn't, you have an option out. And that needs to be stated very clearly. Uh, there are certain cases where the specific aims are not sequential. They can be independently done. And so this does not put you at the risk of, hey, so what happens if you don't? So there was a guy who was doing, who was being told to go the metagenomics way, who was that? It was some, I think the, uh, the French colleague who was uh, talking about, what was this he was talking about? Um, bacteria? Oh, yeah, the oh, for the Borulians, yes. So, so he wanted to first of all identify the specific organisms that are associated with certain types of ulcers. And, and then he wants to develop um, a, a, a detection method for this once you see what's it. So someone might ask you a question, what about if you are not able to first of all classify this? What is your, what happens next? Do we return the money or? <laughs> yes. yes, so you want to design your objectives with this in mind. And you want to say, this is the thing that I will do if that happens. Yeah. So um, I'm a living example of uh, someone who didn't get a grant because exactly of that. So um, our grant scored, so there were two reviewers. First reviewer said, this is the best proposal. The second reviewer said, this is a very good proposal, but every objective leads to the other. Meaning, if they fail in one of the objectives, the project collapses. So, and of course, I wasn't there to defend it. It's, you just get the results afterwards. Uh, I couldn't have defended it <laughs> because um, the way I wrote it wasn't clear to the funder that I could separate the objectives and um, that the objectives didn't need to lead to each other. So it's also the way you write it. Um, you might have four objectives or three objectives, but if you write them as, as though they have to be in, in de um, dependently linked, then you put in a risk in your, in your project. But if you show that you have three objectives, they feed, it, they feed each other, but if one doesn't work the way you thought, there is a, a plan B and C and whatever, that's much better. So um, the, there is a way of presenting your objectives or, or your questions in a way that there is logic, but they don't kill each other um, in the process. <laughs>